Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Goodison Park ahead of this Premier League match versus Tottenham tonight. Delighted to be joined by, and he's part of the furniture here on Everton. I certainly Live. am now. I, I am. Ian Snowden. I think, I think our viewers must be bored of me now, surely. I don't think that's possible, <laughs> Ian, to be honest. You always bring the banter with us. But are uh, you looking forward to this one tonight? Yeah, I am. I am. Um, I was doing the game down at, uh, at Tottenham, opening day of the season. Thought we played extremely well. Who can forget the cup tie here? So, I'm predicting goals, and I'm predicting we score more than Tottenham. So, but I think it's going to be a cracking game. I really do. I think both teams have got to go for it in the position that they're, they're, they're lying. They're all, the two teams need three points. So, uh, yeah, I think we could see a lot of end-to-end -end football tonight. Absolutely. Well, let's have a look at what we have to come here for you tonight on Everton Live. We will, of course, have the team news as well at 7 o'clock before anybody else. But we've got the player, arrive, player arrival sorry, coming soon. As I said, that team news coming up at 7 o'clock. We've got the highlights, another brilliant result for our under-18s in the Youth Cup. We've got a video call with Stephen Pienaar. What a legend he is. The supporters club of the match this week is from Sweden, the Swedish Toffees. We've got the goal of the season nominees and I believe Simone McGill, who is another guest on Zoom, is actually in a, with a goal up for that as well. Uh, we've got Carlo Ancelotti's pre-match uh, interview and also live commentary from yourself, Snods, and Darren Griffiths will be on EvertonFC.com. So that's all to come. So, Snods, we were just saying then as well, you know, we've played Spurs twice this season so far, a 5-4, a 1-0. You'd take that result again, wouldn't you, a 5-4? All day long. <laughs> All day, I'd take the 1-0, to be quite honest. Uh, but, yeah, I just want to reiterate how well we did play down at uh, Spurs, that opening game of the season. Played really well. Spurs weren't at the best, but uh, take nothing away from our boys. I thought we were magnificent down there. And the, uh, the cup game was... You just couldn't take your eyes off it. You just didn't know what was going to happen next. So, uh, I'm hoping it's not as open as that. Um, <laughs> I don't think... As, uh, whoever whoever plays the best, obviously, who who defends well, will win the game. And I just hope it's our boys in in the blue shirts. Well, as you said, it'll probably be an open game mm. uh, with both teams. It's so tight in that table, isn't it, Ian? You know, for Europe, there's so many teams. We've even got Arsenal and Leeds now right behind us. They have. Uh, it's so. We have dropped so many silly points that we could be well up there now. We could be like the West Ham's, the Leicester's, etc. And uh, yeah. This evening's a massive game. I think it's a big game for both clubs. Yeah. Really do, because uh, Mourinho's under a little bit of pressure. They're, they're pulling no trees up at the minute. But they've just got a great forward line. Uh, that score goals regular. Harry Kane's one, one of the best players in, in, in Europe, especially, but probably in the world as well. He's, he's up there amongst the best. Uh, Son's a, a, a terrific player. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to do some defending at times, but uh, hopefully we've got the players to uh, to, to break Tottenham's defence down because that's where I feel that Tottenham are vulnerable, at the back. Yeah. So, fingers crossed, Sarah. <laughs> well, fingers crossed. Absolutely. As you said, you know, we did manage to keep the door shut on Spurs in the opening day of the season. Dominic Calvert-Lewin coming up with a goal that day, getting us off to a flyer in 2000-2021 season. Here's a look back at that game now. We are ready to go again, but the reality of football without fans unfortunately remains. Richarlison's chasing this and he'll get there too. Richarlison's done wonderfully well. Clear chance round the keeper. Oh, he should have given it to Dominic Calvert Lewin, and Everton would surely be in front. Picked up by Decore. Advancing forward for Everton, brings in James Rodriguez on his left foot, goes for goal and narrowly wide. Hugo Lloris springing across to his right-hand side. James Rodriguez almost with a debut goal. Good ball two, what a goal! What a header that is, Dominic Calvert-Lewin! Brilliantly headed home! Nil Everton won, and that ball into the path of Richarlison. Richarlison faced by Sissoko. Richarlison curls one just wide. Wasn't too far away from the Brazilian. Now, 
Here comes Sigurdsson to help out. This ball in. Might break here for Kukure. And then the shot comes in from Seamus Coleman. Rattled goalwards. It was on target. Maurice was right behind it. But the captain caught it well. Sigurdsson takes. The points are Everton's on the opening weekend of the season. It's a perfect start to the new campaign. Savour this one at Tottenham. It has finished. Tottenham Hotspur nil. Everton won. Yeah, all smiles there. It was at full time from Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Uh, no wonder when he got his, his goal scoring tally off to, off to the perfect start. First no, game got, of the season. Yeah, he got off to a flyer, didn't he? Uh, not only that game, but the, the next few games. So did we as a team as well. We got off to a great start at the beginning of the season. All right, we had a little disappointing patch after that. But uh, yeah, I don't think many teams really, uh, many people give us a chance really down at Tottenham. But well, well deserved victory. Yeah, it was. I was just thinking back then, Snods, as well, you're talking about that, that start that we had and it, mm. Spirit of the Blues popped into my head. <laughs> it was it was a fantastic start. We were all dreaming, weren't we, us Blues? <laughs> yeah. We really were. Um, but, uh, no, he, as, I, as I say, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a difficult game. We, there's no doubt about this. And uh, Marino will, will want a reaction off his team as well. So, uh, yeah, he's, he's who wants it most and let's hope it's our boys. Yeah, let's hope so. And of course, we're just speaking about him then, the goal scorer in the reverse fixture. Unfortunately, there will be no Dominic mm. Calvert-Lewin today. Uh, Carlo said that in his press conference. He should be back available for the next game, but it's going to be a big loss today, isn't he, Dom? He, he is a big loss because what he gives you, he gives you pace. Uh, you can put balls in into the air. Goal kicks, he, win, he wins flick-ons. He, he chases balls into the channel. He puts the back four under, uh, the opposition back four under, under in sorting problems out for me he has so improved Dominic Calvert-Lewin in the last couple of years to be an England international and, he, and he's showing that he really is and uh, I've been very very impressed with him uh, for, for the last 12 months He's been fantastic, hasn't he? No doubt about that. And a massive loss he will be today. And on that, obviously, we've got about seven minutes now until team news. How do you think Everton set up today? Like, what, what would you predict? Where will the goals come from for us today? <sighs> It's a tough one. Um, I really don't know. We, we're saying that we've got four back. Uh, one's including the keeper, Pickford. Um, so I really don't know if we'll set up with a five or, or a four. We'll know more when the teams actually come out. But for me, midfield players have, start, have got to start contributing in goals. Um, we, we've, we've had one from Andre Gomez since he arrived. I think we've only had six from... Tom Davis as well. Uh, so from midfield, you need you need goal scorers. You need people getting into the box, trying trying to help Richarlison, trying to help um, Calvert Lewin when he's when he's available. So yeah, you can't just rely on them two players all the time. So uh, for me, midfield have got to start getting in the in the penalty box, in the 18-yard box, and, and having shots on target as well. Definitely more goals from midfield. We don't we don't it care is, where they come from, do no, we? No, absolutely don't. So that's that's what I want to see. I want to see goals from midfield or wide players as well getting in at the back post. That's what you want, isn't it, Ian? You want everybody chipping in. Just take that bit of pressure off. Obviously, you know when Calvert Lewin's out, that must be an enormous amount of pressure on Richarlison. Do yeah. You want them coming in with goals from all over the park. Yeah, it is, and uh, not only that, but as a back four as well or a back five. When you've got Dominic up there, and you know it was like our timing we we Sharpie up front. You knew if you knocked a ball high in the air, he was going to win it. If you knocked it into his chest, he was going to hold it up. He was a great finisher. So it it, it gives you extra. Uh, uh, being a, I used to play right back, and I used to look up. My first look up was can I hit Graham Sharp? Either can I put it in the air for him? Can I play it down the channels? And that's what our team looked to do. All right, they, they, he's changed the game a little bit now. They play along the back. But if you need an outlet ball, when you've got Dominic Calvert-Lewin up there, you put it up there and he's going he's gonna to win things and he's going to chase things down. So he's a big loss for me. It yeah. really is. He isn't, you know, we haven't scored many goals. The last two games, we've only scored one goal, of course. We drew mm. a nil-nil against Brighton and a, a one-all at home. James Rodriguez was the man with the goal in that game. See, very disappointed not to, not to win that one. But it was a goal with his, his least preferred foot as well, his right foot. It was, it was a great was. finish. His, his first touch was exceptional. Uh, and 
he just oozes class, he really does. So there's some games he gets lost and he, he finds it difficult with the pace of the game at times, but for pure ability, he's, he's magnificent, absolutely. I love to see him spraying balls about, I love to see him just giving a free roll and go and play anywhere you want. And uh, he is a terrific player, but that just sums with... We should have beat Palace, for me. We, we had numerous opportunities to, to extend our lead and then suck punch towards the end. So Brighton, a little bit disappointing. We had one shot uh, on target, which is disappointing. You want to, you want more more effort, especially against a team like Brighton. And all right, they, they're decent. They knock it around well, but I expected to get a result down there. But uh, I'll take a draw at Brighton and three points this evening. Yeah, absolutely. That would certainly put a smile back on all the fans' yeah. faces, wouldn't it? And, you know, we've just got on the screen there, we can see Jordan Pickford. Uh, he is back in contention after injury, so it's great to see him available. Also, Joshua King, I believe, Andre, uh, Andre Gomez and Alan as well are the players that, that Carlo has said will be available for tonight. Do you expect us to go with Jordan Pickford back between the sticks today, Ian? I, th I do, yeah. I do. I think Carlo sees him as his number one. Uh, and nothing against Olsen, he's he's done terrifically well since he came back. Since he came to the club, he's he's done really well. But Carlo believes that uh, Jordan's his number one, and I think he'll be he'll be in tonight. So uh, it just depends whether he plays the rest of them who, who, who's fit. Will he will he give Josh King a, a run out? I we haven't seen much of Josh no, King, we have we? Not in not in his preferred position as well as a striker. He's come on and he's played out wide at times, so I'm sure he wants to be a central striker, getting in behind defenders. So, is it an evening for to start him? We will know in what five minutes? Yeah, uh, less than that. Now it's not. We've got two and a half minutes. All right. I just just smiling there. You can't help but smile when you see Big Dunk, can you? Even with his mask on, you can tell he's smiling. Under he looks there. fit enough to play Big Dunk. Doesn't he? He's, <laughs> Maybe uh, he's the answer. He's, now he's a lean machine. Yeah, give him five minutes. <laughs> Let him upset one or two of the Tottenham players. I, I can imagine. I, I don't think they'd be too happy if they saw his name on that start at 11. I don't think there'd be many defenders who'd, uh, who'd like to come up against him. Uh, but we just see there as well on the screen before, Alan, whose back should be back available today. He's a massive player for this club, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he? he just sits in there. He, he, gives, he dictates play. He dictates his teammates, pulling them in, dragging them around, telling them where he wants them to be. And he's always available for his back four or his... Uh, back five, whatever we play, he's always there wanting the ball. Even if it's a little f four, five-yard passes, he's always there wanting the ball. So uh, he's an important uh, figure in, in Everton's team and the way Carlo wants to uh, wants to play the game. Definitely. And we just see on screen there, we've got a couple of our, our young lads, so it looks like no doubt we will have a few of those in the squad today, like we saw at Brighton. Mm. Uh, Tom Davis as well there, who you know could start in midfield. He'll be wanting to, to contribute today, won't he, Tom? Yeah, Tom, Tom's been excellent over the uh, last few months, to be quite honest. He, uh, he puts himself about. He's been doing that role that Alan, uh, unfortunately, we, we, we haven't been with Alan. He's been doing that role, just sitting in front of the back four. But, yeah, he's been tenacious. He, he wins titles. He's a winner. He's, he, he's, an, he's an Everton player, and he, he wants to win when he, when he puts that shirt on. And uh, hopefully the rest of them will follow the suit today. Yeah, definitely. Well, he's one of us, isn't he, Tom? So he'll yeah. be he'll be wanting them points today, just like the rest of us. Uh, we've got less than a minute now until team news. So you can see this game being an open one. Obviously, we're saying we're hoping it's not mm. maybe as open as the as the 5-4. Although, if you could guarantee the result would take that, I'm not sure my heart would take no. it at this, this stage. But uh, like we said, Spurs, that front three, they're, they're what we've really got to look out yeah, for today, the, aren't they? Yeah, they're excellent. That's their strongest point of their team. Uh, the weakest point for me is the defence. So if we can if we can get at them uh, at their defence, then I'm, I'm sure we'll score goals. But keeping them out is a big question because they've got some absolute quality strikers and Harry Kane. Just everybody would, would want Harry Kane in the team. Uh, they really would, and some. So uh, yeah, it's going to be a difficult job for our boys, but I'm sure they're prepared to do it. Yeah, definitely. Well, here we go then, Ian. The wait is over. We have got the team news will be with us just any second now. Starting with the home team, of course, in Everton. So it is that man, mm. Jordan Pickford, who comes back in to goal for Everton today. We've got Mason Holgate, Michael Keane. There he is as well. That man, Alan, who's saying so important to that midfield, is back today. The pigeon, Richarlison. <laughs> <laughs> Gilfie Sigurdsson as well in there today. 
Luca Dean starting. I'm guessing at left back as well. Alex Awobi is back in the starting mm. eleven for today. Hammers Rodriguez. We expected him, didn't we? Ben Godfrey. Tom Davis as well there. And the substitutes for Everton today are Jal Virginia, Jonas Lossell, Joshua King, Niels Nkunku, Seamus Coleman, Nathan Broadhead, Kyle John, Isaac Price and Reese Welch as well there. So like we said, Snods, a lot of the young lads are in there. Um, yeah, what do you make of that team then? Looks as though it's going to be a flat back four. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. Just just to interrupt you yeah, there. That's no my problem. fault there, Snods. We've got Spurs team here as well. Uh, Hugo Lloris in goal. We've got Regulon, Alderweireld, Pierre Emile Hoiberg. Ho 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 <laughs> Easy for you to say. Uh, Son. We've got Harry Kane, Roden, Eric Dyer, Sissoko, Aurea, and Ndombele as well. About the team that I expected to see there from Spurs. Uh, and on the substitutes bench for them today, you've got Hart, Sanchez, Winks, Bay. Lamella, Lo Celso, Deli Ali, Tanganga and Mora as well. So, wow, that's a pretty strong bench there from Tottenham Hotspur, isn't it? So, we'll start with Everton then. Um, yeah, it looks as though it's going to be a flat back four. Mason Allgate probably right back uh, yeah. with Godfrey and Michael Keane and then Luca Dean on the uh, left-hand side, the left back. So, uh, I think Tom might play a little bit more forward today um, with Alan being back in the team. We don't want two really sitting. Um, or are we worried about their pace and breaking from midfield and getting the ball up? So it's a tough one. Will we see Tom sitting alongside Alan? I don't think it needs to. Uh, I think Alan does a, a good enough job on his own. Um, Alex Awobi back into the team. That's a little bit surprising. But um, we've got Richarlison up there, obviously, and uh, Rodriguez. So, yeah. I think the team that he's put out are well capable of winning this game. But then when you look at, at Tottenham's team, you, you look at their bench and the names on their bench. So it's a real, real strong bench. But you look at the, the teams, I like Sissoko. I think he's strong in the middle of the park. Uh, Dambele as well, he's skillful. He, he's come on unbelievably in the last few months as well. So, uh, yeah, Sarah, you know, everybody knows that this is a tough game and we're not we're not going to... We're not going to sit, stand here and predict that Everton are going to win 2-3-4-0 or anything. It's going to be an hard game. It's going to be a very hard game, as you said, Ian. I think when you look at that bench, like you just said, they've got Gareth Bale, they've got Lucas Moura, they've got Deli Ali and the like it's on incredible. there. It's a, it's a strong bench, that it, is, isn't, isn't it? So It is, and, and if things aren't going right, then they've, they've got the players, the quality on that bench to change things. But I'm delighted that some of our young lads are getting a, getting a chance as well to get on the bench and getting in around. Not only that, they'll be training through the week with the first team, and now they're, they're sat on a bench watching. Who knows? You, you might be needed as well. So uh, I'm delighted because I watch the 23s and I watch the uh, I've watched the youth uh, cup games and some of them deserve a place on the bench and it's it's terrific for them. Yeah, it is. And what experience that must be, you know, sitting on the bench, looking into the dugout and seeing Carlo Ancelotti looking, you know, next to you or in the tunnel or something and seeing James Rodriguez. It's it's massive for these lads, isn't it? You've got young Isaac and Reese there, and they're training with. Amas Rodriguez, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And that can only be so valuable for him to learn off him. And, and I, I think he, I think he's fantastic. I I made my debut. All right, we're talking Division Three with Doncaster, but I was only 16. And it's uh, unbelievable. You're nervous, but it's unbelievable to be involved with the first team at such a young age and that. And young guy, 17 year old. And oh. Baby, he is a baby, <laughs> but he's great. He, he's fantastic. He, it's priceless for his career. Yeah, to just be in and around it. Oh, and it's something no doubt they'll they'll absolutely treasure. Um, but speaking of our young Evertonians, and another fantastic result for our boys in the Youth Cup against Chelsea into the quarterfinals. Now that Tom Cannon pinches it down this right hand side for Everton. Hasn't really been involved a great deal, Tom Cannon. He is now, though, infield to Stanley Mills. Oh, Whitaker just couldn't take it with him. Can he get a shot away? No, it's blocked. It'll fall for McAllister, oh. and he finds the back of the net, and Everton take the lead in the 35th minute of the game. Sean McAllister, the goal scorer. Chelsea nil, Everton won. Absolutely superb. Good defending to start off with. Nicked the ball, Tom Cannon, broke down the right-hand side. He forgot a hand to it, but he wasn't keeping that out. And Sean McAllister, 18 years of age, Finds the back of the net for Everton. And didn't enjoy it and quite right too. 
for your banner for Chelsea. The substitute, he's a big unit as well, isn't he? Lays it off to Vale. Vale digs out the cross into the penalty area. And there's the goal from Joe Haig. Chelsea a level. Little dink into the penalty area from the left hand side of the box. And Joe Haig, England under 16 international, nodded it into the empty net. Really difficult for Thierry Smalls to, to, to be able to defend with someone coming over the top of him, but be disappointed with that Everton. Webster, great foot in. Now, chance for Everton to break. Chelsea have got men forward. Rafa Garcia picks it up for the Toffees. Charlie Whitaker busting, busting a gut to get inside the penalty area. Garcia brings it in field, overruns it. Shooting chance, straight up. Oh, it's gone in! It's in the back of the net. Sean McAllister's shot has squirmed under the goalkeeper. Chelsea players fall to the ground. And Everton lead by two goals to one in the most bizarre circumstances. McAllister's effort lacked power and it squirms under the goalkeeper. Well, if you don't buy a ticket, you won't win the raffle. And he's shot for goal. Oh, absolutely fantastic stuff there from our young Evertonians and into the quarterfinals they go. It's brilliant to see. Now I am delighted to say that joining me on Zoom, we've got an Everton legend, ex-Everton, ex-Spurs, Stephen Pienaar. Stephen, thank you so much for joining us here on Everton Live tonight. Um, no doubt you're really excited for this one. Previous teams, Everton and Spurs for you. How much are you looking forward to this one and how do you see it going? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a special game. Obviously, two of my former clubs playing tonight um, against Chitauda. Uh Obviously, uh, both teams need need a point uh, to get to push for the top four spot of European football. So it's a massive game for both clubs, um, especially for Everton. Uh, we can, if if the club win tonight, do you have you close the gap already uh, with Liverpool and still with a game in hand. So. It's a massive game for the, for, for the team. Yeah, like you said there, Stephen, you know, the table is so tight. If we win, we can go above Spurs. We've still very much got Liverpool in our sights. And as you rightly mentioned, you know, we have got that game in hand. So a win tonight and Everton, you know, we're right back in it in that race for Europe, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, we, we have to start picking up points uh, at home. Um, if you look at the last couple of games, uh, we got uh, a lot of points against Palace against uh, Fulham, you know, um, normally if Goodison Park is a fortress, teams are scared to come uh, to, to Goodison Park. But, uh, you know, uh, hopefully today we'll start uh, picking up three points and push on to get into the European place. Definitely. You speak about Goodison Park there. I've been privileged enough over the years to watch you a fair few times uh, play at Goodison Park. And as you said, Stephen, you know, the atmosphere here, when it's a packed out crowd, the likes of you, Bainesy, Arteta, Kale, this place used to absolutely rock, didn't it? So it's no doubt that Everton have suffered a little bit without fans this season at home. Yeah, definitely. Like I said earlier, um, you know, Goodison Park used to be a fortress. Uh, a lot of teams uh, were scared to come uh, and play, you know. Obviously, with the supporters behind you, you know, uh, you know what you're getting. Uh, it's, a, it's a difficult place uh, for teams to play. Um, yeah, the the I think the players have failed uh, this season uh, without the support. It's been tough. But, um, you know, you can't uh, put it uh, as a blame. Uh, at the end of the day, you have to perform on the field and that's where you collect the points by putting in the shift on the field. Absolutely. Now, you obviously did play for Everton and you joined Spurs before returning home to Everton. Uh, I feel like Everton is, is your club, isn't it? You're obviously an ambassador with us as well. What was it like when you returned to Everton after playing for Spurs? Um, at first, when I when I came back, uh, obviously uh, my first game was away at uh, at Wigan. Um, I was I was kind of relaxed uh, when I went into the game, you know, with a, with a, with the team, the players. Were, uh, I had a warm welcome. So, but when we my second game was uh, at Goodison Park against Chelsea, so. Obviously, you know, uh, playing at Goodison Park, uh, I, I was kind of nervous when I walked out. I didn't know what uh, reception I'll get. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, when when my name was announced and I heard the people shouting, clapping, then I was like, wow, you know, this, this is home. Uh, and, you know, I, I always have to go out there and 
give 110 percent for the for the club for the supporters that come and watch and it's stood always by my side you know even when I left and came back uh, it is it is it is my club it's yeah what can I say I'm part and parcel of it of the furniture well we we here, Steve and Pinar, and I, I love you uh, on social media as well. When Everton are playing, you get really involved. And I was here that day when you returned, and the the reception that you received was absolutely fantastic, and speaks volumes about how well loved you are here. Uh, but just in terms of yourself and your career now, I believe you're doing your badges. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, I've I've got my UEFA A license. Uh, I've been doing my internship uh, at Ajax uh, in the in the, in the academy. Um, I'm sorry. I think we might have lost Stephen. The connection has gone. Yeah, we've lost the connection. So apologies there. It was so great to hear from Stephen Pienaar. Sorry to cut you short there, Stephen. Um, but, but now, now we've, <laughs> it's it's as I said, apologies there that we did just lose Stephen Pino, how great it was to have him with us. But now we've got two days left for you to join the EFC Fans Forum. And here's Sharpie telling you how you can do that. I need to applaud these people who, who work, you know, they work uh, a, a normal job, but then find time to to join the forum and uh, and work hard for for the fellow fans, I think you know over the years, as I said before, there's there've been many issues. And, you know, people people tend to forget. They think these fans are just in through the through the gate on a Saturday or whenever it is, and, and that's it as far as it, it goes. But I think there's bigger issues that need to be addressed, and I think it's a it's a platform for for everybody to raise. Uh, concern, if there be any con uh, concern about certain issues. I think, you know, internationally is, you know, we've been for many, many years trying to grow our, our international fan base. And I think over the last few years, I think that, that's multiplied, you know, tenfold with the, the introduction of our, our South American players in particular. So I think it's important that we uh, we reach out to all the fans, you know, throughout the world. There's more and more coming on board now, and hopefully, be more and more in the future as well as the as the team progresses and as the club progresses. So I think it's very important that you know we listen to to all uh, spectres of a fan base. We've got to work alongside our fans, you know, and, and listen to them and and, and uh, heed their advice. You know, they have. They will have problems of their own kind of thing, don't get me wrong, but you know, this football club is is so important to the fans. You know, people don't realise that I mean, when we work in, in and around the football club and you, you go and visit people, you just realise how much the actual football club means to them. You know, it's it's everything. For people it's everything. Uh so we, we realise that and we know that we've got to to work alongside them and give them what, what they require as much as we possibly can. You know, it's exciting times for the football club, and the new stadium and, and the manager and the new team, uh, building the new team. Uh, so it's a, a lot to look forward to, but I think we have to look forward to it together, you know, and, and we're well aware of that as a football club. And, and we're delighted to have the fans on board and we'll listen to, to what they say. It's an exciting time to, to be an Evertonian. There's lots to look forward to, uh, and the fans are massively important and that as well as a football club. So, great time to join. And there he is, the man that we were talking about before, Graham Sharp. Legend, <laughs> isn't he? He needs a shave, though. Doesn't he? <laughs> I've always told him it doesn't suit him, you know. He needs a shave. He looks much cleaner and healthier when he's had a shave. <laughs> <laughs> you've been exchanging you know, as you've noticed I have today so oh, I was going to say I you're looking out. lovely thank for you, it thank you thank you thank you Sarah <laughs> but what a player Graham Sharp was for Ledge Everton. Ledge yeah. great player um, good friend as well um, yeah can't can't speak highly enough of Sharp he's uh, and I'm sure every Evertonian can't he had a tough start when he first arrived so he said and then once he got in the team and started scoring goals well he was the number nine, weren't he? He's uh, yeah, a fantastic player. Great to uh, great teammate. Great to have in your team. Uh, 
could handle himself on the pitch as well if it kicked off. So uh, the complete player for me. Absolutely, and scored some of the, the greatest oh. Everton goals of all time, hasn't he, to be honest? Uh, he reminds me as well, you know. He reminds me how many great goals he has oh, does he? Yeah. <laughs> the, the one at Anfield starts off at 30 yards, and now I've been I've known him for 30 odd years, and it's now 70 yards Is out it? that goal. So <laughs> he wasn't even uh, in, the, does he wasn't exaggerate. Even in the ground. No, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he scored some fantastic goals. Yeah, fantastic and fantastic there as well uh, with Everton fans forum. Now, yourself, Ian, as well, I know that you have an awful lot to do with our supporters. You're in regular contact with supporters clubs, various Everton fans. It means a lot to you, doesn't it, that report? Yeah, it really fans. does. Um, we, we're asked to do a lot of Zoom calls uh, to supporters clubs. Uh, I know the Swedish uh, lot are on tonight and uh, we've got loads in America that we're always in contact with uh, through Darren Griffiths as well so yeah I think it's great that we've got fan bases all over the world and that we the Iranian one the other week uh, yeah. as we were talking so uh, yeah they're popping up everywhere so uh, yeah more the merrier I say yes more Evertonians the better <laughs> there, there can never be too many Evertonians no, they can't. can there they Ian? cannot <laughs> and you've just said it there before as well this week our Everton supporters club of the match is coming to you from Sweden here's the Swedish Toffees <laughs> My name is Eric Promell and I'm the chairman of the Swedish Toffees. I've been a Everton supporter since the mid-70s. In Sweden there was a program from 69 until the mid-90s called Tips Extra. And this was sent about 15 games per season. And I was lucky enough to pick Everton. So in 2008, uh, this supporter club, the Swedish Toffees, were founded in a small village in South Sweden called Viken. And from then on we have been, we were about 100 members from the start and we have been growing every season. Swedish Toffees has currently 582 members. We grow and grow every season and became more members every year. Trevor Steven from the mid-80s. Uh, for me, a brilliant player. I, I must say, all of the team in, in the 1980s is my is favorite players in my eyes, and for Blatch, for Dave Thomas before that, and so on. But Trevor Steven was something special, the perfect midfielder, uh, as I can see him. His movement with the ball was absolutely astonishing. We usually go every year on a members' trip to Merseyside. We have made 12 trips together. And in the last five times, we have been over 80 people traveling from Sweden. These trips are really the highlight of the year. And we used to meet all club legends, local fans, and of course the club's ambassador. We really feel part of the club. We have uh, a few celebrities, uh, Everton celebrities in our, um, among our members. Uh, like Anders Limpar and Niklas Alexandersson, who, who both have played for Everton and have also been traveling with us on member trips from time to time. Uh, and um, I remember especially when Limpar traveled with us, and uh, <laughs> almost everyone recognized him when we were walking down Goodison Road. A load of legends there uh, for the Swedish Toffees, and as you've just seen on screen there, everything you need to get in touch with them. Snods, it's brilliant, isn't it? The amount of, of fans that they bring over to Goodison Park, and how great it will be when they can get back in here. I've had a night out with them in, in Liverpool, the Swedish Toffees. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I'd they, love to hear they know, all about they know that. how to drink as well. They know <laughs> how to entertain themselves when the uh, when they do come over. But yeah, it's fantastic. They've got great numbers. They love coming over. And Darren Griffiths always tries to make sure that there's an ex-player there to have a little chat with them and have a social drink with them as well. So, uh, yeah, they're a, they're a great crowd and uh, they're very welcome to Goodison uh, any time they want to come. Definitely. As at all our supporters club, we can't wait to see you all here uh, in the hopefully not too distant future. It's what we want, isn't it? This place, like we say every week, football mm. is nothing without fans. No, it isn't snod. nothing. And uh, our position at the minute... We want to get into Europe. We want to go to different uh, countries and let these fans, even if we drew somebody in Sweden, 
they're there. They're yeah. there. To, they don't have to travel over to England to watch us. So it's important we try and get back into Europe. Of course it is. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure every supporters club love coming to Goodison as well. This is the home of Everton. They love coming here to the stadium. So And you're right. It's nothing we are the fans. And uh, hopefully... I think we'll get a few in towards the end of the season, but hopefully hope. next season we'll, we could be back to normality. Let's hope so. And you've just made a really, really good point there, Snods, as well, about, you know, we're so close in this, this battle for Europe. It is going to be tough, but that's where Everton Football Club needs to be, isn't it, as well? And like you said, it gives so many people in, in different nations across Europe the chance to, to go out and get Everton and not only just to travel here, but... It's important for our, you know, for our identity, isn't it? We need to be out there. In of, of course, we're a bit, we're a massive club. We're a massive club, Everton. And I know people over the park will go, hey, the small club of Merseyside. Oh, we don't, uh, listen, we don't do listen. We? we don't listen to them. We're a big club, and we, we we should be in Europe. We should be competing in the top four, top six, year in and year out. So uh, if Leicester can do it and West Ham can do it, surely we can. It's just been f so frustrating. We've been so close to that top four all season let's not fall away at the at the last six or seven games let's let's put in some good performances let's pick up some victories and let we're still there we're still there and uh, if we get the right results we could be there we could be there and let's hope we will be a massive game tonight leading up to that but before that we have got our end of season awards coming up now here are the nominations for goal of the season and everything you need to know to vote Did well there to turn away. And, uh, oh, it's through to Dominic Calvert Lewin who scored. Brilliant. Well, it's becoming a wonderful habit. Dominic Calvert Lewin is at it again.
absolutely lovely stuff there. I tell you what, I could watch that BT on repeat. The Richarlison goal at Anfield, and then that last goal there from Simone McGill. Absolute worldy shot there. And delighted to say that she is joining us now live on Zoom. Simone, so lovely to see you. Thank you for joining us here on Everton Live. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on. Well, we had to get you on, Si. I've been trying to get you on for a while anyway, but you had no excuse not to come on. After you made history like in this week when you qualified the Euro 2022 with Northern Ireland, winning 4-1 on aggregate against the Ukraine. How are you feeling? That's, that's incredible, mate. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, um, I think I'm still in cloud nine, to be honest. Um, unbelievable achievement, um, making history from us. Uh, you know, against all the odds, it's a real underdog story and, you know, a fantastic team and a fantastic group to be a part of. So uh, to go out and make history and, you know, to have a European finals to look forward to, it's an amazing achievement. It's the first major tournament that Northern Ireland have qualified for. It is huge. And how does it feel to know that you'll have inspired a whole generation of young boys, young girls now that, that want to be part of that green and white army? Yeah, I think, you know, I get asked that question a lot and I always say, like, that's what it's all about, you know. And on uh, on Tuesday night, you know, I was just thinking of every young girl and boy sitting at home watching that game and, you know, how the whole country was behind us and we really, really felt the support. You know, people couldn't be in the ground, but we really felt the support coming from everybody. And I just really thought about, you know, that little girl sat at home watching that and how inspired she must feel to know, you know, that could be me in five, ten years' time and, just we're paving the way and what we've just done for football in Northern Ireland is monumental now this will be a massive turning point for the game back home so it's a fantastic moment um, for women's football in Northern Ireland. It's it's huge and obviously you scored the goal in the first leg as well um, what did it feel like when you scored that goal and I just want to get the grasp of what your emotions were at that full time as well like you said it was one of the best moments of your life and I know a lot of the team feel the same way it was just wonderful to see. You're still on cloud nine, aren't you? Yeah, massively so. And, you know, we went out there and, you know, we lost a, a key player so early on in the game as well. And we had we were up 1-0 and then they came back 1-0. We're away from home and we know just how important, you know, getting away goals are in playoff games like that. And, you know, to get to get the winner out there, you know, that's a fantastic feeling. But when the, the full-time whistle went out over there, it was so hard. You really did want to celebrate, but you had a hold back because you knew there was another 90 minutes, a huge 90 minutes still left to play. And, you know, that in-between phase, you had to just kind of try and focus and compose yourself and try and almost forget about the first game because there was still such a long, long way to go. And it was just kind of like I just wanted to play the game immediately so that we could, you know, we could know where we're at. And then obviously when we got out there um, on the pitch on Tuesday night and we got free for the game, I was like, we've got this, we've got this game. And, and then obviously we, we scored the two goals and then when the referee blew the whistle at the end, just, there were no words. Like, I think I just burst into tears at the end, you know, started looking at words and, and we were all just like, we could not believe what we had just achieved. You know, we were, I know the new rankings came out today, but we were ranked like 59th in the world. And, you know, we almost ach achieved the impossible dream. And it was just, it was, you know, it was outstanding what we overcome. We had overcome so many barriers uh, you know so many injuries you know doing all this in the middle of this pandemic and to come out the other side and, and qualify it's just you know there's there's actually no no words I think our manager said they need to make a movie on this <laughs> yeah well absolutely why not I'd go and watch it Si that's for sure um and I can't wait to see you in action in the Euros and you know so many people are, are delighted to see Northern Ireland there and no doubt you're massively looking forward to that and to the opposition that you're going to come up against some of the best players in the world. Uh, but speaking of, what a season you're having with Everton as well. We just saw your goal against Birmingham in the BT for goals of the season. And I don't know if you saw that Richarlison basically gave you his vote um, on Twitter. When he saw that, he was like, Simone McGill. Uh, and he's obviously in there with a nomination as well. But what did you think when you saw Richie's voting for you as well? Yeah, no, that was, that was top class, to be fair. I wasn't expecting that. You know, I've seen, obviously... It had come out and I was nominated and, and you know, for Richarlison to do to do that was was class. I've got quite a lot of a lot of support from all the Everton fans about the goal as well, which is really good to see. So um yeah, probably the best goal I've ever scored in my life. So for it to be up for 
to be nominated, you know, it's it's a good achievement and, you know, I'm, I'm buzzing about that one. Well, you get my vote, Si, that's for sure. There's only, it's that penny. We'll have to tell that story another time, but Simone's got a lucky penny. <laughs> it's come good for you, hasn't it? It has. It's worked wonders. I'm never letting it go. <laughs> <laughs> Never. That was actually the goal that we scored. That you scored just after that lucky penny. But uh, we'll save that for another time. We'll save that for a podcast, I think, because that story does need to be told. But we have got a game Sunday. We're back in FA Cup action against Durham. We're actually going to be streaming the game live on YouTube. But we've had a taste of of FA Cup. Almost, almost the ultimate success. We got to the final in, in Wembley. Um, got to be going for it again this season, haven't we? Yeah, definitely. You know, like you said, you know, we got a we got a taste a taste for getting to Wembley uh, last well this year, but for last year's competition. And you know, I think if anything, that makes you even more determined to want to get back there and and go all the way and and get the trophy and get the silverware. So you know, that journey for us starts starts on Sunday with a with a home game to Durham, and hopefully, you know, we can get off to a good start and that journey back to Wembley can start again. Definitely. Well, I can't wait to be at Walton Hall Park and see you back in action on Sunday and what season you're having. Six goals and counting. Get that penny ready because we might have another one for you. But Simone, thank you so much for joining us on Everton Live. Huge congratulations to you and all of the girls in Northern Ireland. Fantastic achievement. And we will see you on Sunday, mate. Thanks very much. Thank you. Brilliant stuff. Simone McGill there. And now we are looking back to get us in the mood for tonight's game. Here is some goals against Tottenham. Yeah, love seeing the goals versus the opposition to get you in the mood for the game. Uh, we want to see some today, don't we, Snods? We for Everton, of course. <laughs> we certainly do. We really do. Um, so important to start the game off well, bright, uh, play with a buzz if we can, and get the ball forward. I, I like to see the ball get f played forward quicker than it, than it has been doing. But every team seems to play this way now. Pass out from the goalkeeper, even goal kicks pass out square on the six yard box. And I'm thinking, oh, if we'd have done that in our time, we'd have got absolutely murdered by <laughs> our managers. Get the ball forward, but I like to see an early ball forward to, to your strikers. And then you're, you're always playing in their half. Then, yeah. if you give the ball away, passing about at the back, and you're under pressure straight away. So there's at times you have got to get the ball forward quicker than we do. And uh, direct, isn't it? Being direct. Yeah, and it's not it's not being a Wimbledon of the 80s and 90s. It's not being about that. At times, it's, it's the best ball. Get it out of your feet. Look up and play the ball into feet down the line or whatever. But play. make sure you're playing Tottenham's half. And that's why I'm wanting to see, see this evening. Playing Tottenham's half. Absolutely, that's what we want. We want to we want to have a go at them, see us, you know, try and get the first goal. That's going to be massive, isn't it, in tonight's game? Of course it is. Uh, for the last few seasons, I I think Tottenham have been one of the better sides that have been at Goodison mm -hmm. over the last four or five years. They seem to have played really, really well against us. And uh, looking at the team, but then you look at the performances of late, and they're not inspiring. They're not they're not great. And at times I, I've watched them and I thought, mm, this is. This is not a great Tottenham team, but the players that they've got there, you're wondering why, because they have got... And the some, manager too. Yeah, they've got some quality, quality players. Uh, they must be, Mourinho must be as frustrated as anybody and the Tottenham fans that this team are not doing better than what they should be. Well, let's hope that that carries on and <laughs> somebody else will be hoping to frustrate Jose Mourinho and Tottenham today is Ben Godfrey and here he is ahead of the game. 
Well, Ben, firstly, if you want to have the season that this has promised to be for so long, how important is tonight? Yeah, um, there's no hiding how, how important tonight's, tonight's game is. Um, you know, all of us in, in there know, know how big it is. Um, and yeah, we're, we're an ambitious team and we want to climb that table and, and achieve something special. So, as you said, you know, tonight's a really important game and, and we're looking for three points. You've been hit by some injuries, form's dipped a little bit, certainly results have. What's that been down to and how's the confidence? Now, listen, you know, you, you mentioned injuries, but we're, we're really lucky here that we've got good depth um, and quality um, all over the place. So, when, you know, when players get injured that have been playing regularly, we've always got someone ready to ready to step up. Um, so, you know, we're going through a stage at a minute where a couple of players are injured, but, you know, the, the boys are, who, who will come in are, are always ready and um, ready and raring to go. Um, so, yeah, as I said, everyone will be, be ready and, and fighting for those three points tonight as it's a, it's, a, it's a big one for us all. And in terms of Tottenham, how big a test is their forward line for a defender? Yeah, of course, there's no, um, there's no denying they've got they've got a lot of quality up there, um, <clears throat> you know, and that's that's always the case in the Premier League. And if you want to achieve what we want to achieve, you've got to, you know, find a way to, to silence those those types of players with, with the you know the quality that they have. Um, and yeah, you know, they're, they're a good team, and we've got to be on it 100% if we want to get those three points tonight. Yeah, so Ben Godfrey there. I just love his mentality. Uh, he's been a he's been a real standout for us this season, hasn't he? He'll be dying to keep a clean sheet today. Yeah, well, I didn't really see that much of him when he was at Norwich, and uh, I was quite surprised when when we bid all that money for him. I'm thinking, well, is he going to get in the team? Is he is he what Everton need? He sure is. <laughs> he's, been, he's been outstanding since his arrival. He's got electrifying pace. He, he competes. He, he's he's competitive. Um, I think he's an outstanding player, and he's only a young lad as well. So uh, I think we've got many, many years of watching him perform in a blue shirt, and uh, he's impressed me since his arrival. Put it that way. Oh, it's exceptional, isn't it? Like you said, the age of him. He's such a young player, but the way he plays with such confidence, confidence, such authority, and I think he's almost like a perfect blend of like a proper throwback and a modern-day footballer. And he can do all the, you know, fancy passing and stuff, but. The tackling on him, on him and the speed, he, he's just great. And as you said, you know, I think the signings that we made, Alan, Decore, Hammers and Godfrey, out of all of them, you almost expected probably Godfrey maybe not to be one of the more key ones, but hasn't he proved how, how key he is? Absolutely, I, I'm, and I'm sure that uh, Carlo, when, when Godfrey is fit, he's probably one of the first names on the sheet because he, his pace alone gets him out of tricky situations. Uh, you don't need pace... You do in, in certain positions, but Alan ain't got any pace. He, he's played for the top teams, Napoli, Everton, etc. It's not all about pace, but when you're in a back four or a back five, if you get a ball played over the top or somebody decides to run you, if you've got pace, it does help you put it that way. Oh, it's nice to know, isn't it? When you do yeah. see that coming, you, you think, OK, you, you fancy Ben to get there, which is which is brilliant to see. Uh, we've got them questions, questions for you again. again. So do you know what's yeah. coming, don't you? Um, so the Toffee Kid from Walton wants to know, what was your first car? Oh, my first car <laughs> was a VW Golf. Nice, classic. £750. Yeah, nice. And... It lasted me about six months. It was horrendous. <laughs> and it was green as well. Green? Oh, dear like, what kind of got mint green, bogey like a, green, is it? Oh, it was just an horrible green. <laughs> Honestly, really well. The, but for six months, I used to, it was my pride and joy. <laughs> I love but that. But it didn't last more than six months. And then, <laughs> and then I got a rise so I could afford a, a better one. But nothing nothing onto it. But it, it cost me £750, a VW Golf green one. I horrendous I love that <laughs> crazy to think but it's a sentimental thing isn't yeah. it always your, your first car I love that great question uh, Paul from Om Ormskirk sorry wants to know oh I like this did you ever have to do like an initi initiation song or any kind of initiation I don't mind, I don't mind singing so I would yeah? gladly gladly even if we uh, on the team bus coming home, we'll have a little sing song if we won games. And yeah, there were a few a few decent singers who'd get up, no problem. And I'm not saying I'm decent, but I, I don't mind getting up and singing a song, especially after a few drinks. <laughs> and I've got, I've got more than one song in the locker, by the way. <laughs> well, you've let yourself in for it now. Don't Ian. Worry. I think, you know, last game of the season, I'm going to get you to give us a tune, don't, I tell you. Don't worry about that. You'll be fed up when I've been on there about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just be Everton live, live karaoke, me Good and Snods right. for Good the right. last game of the season, party mode. No, I absolutely. What's your what's your go-to song, by the way? Little old wine drinker. 
Oh. Yes. I, I can sing a tune to Little Old Wine. Oh. Especially after a few wines as well. <laughs> you say vodka's your uh, drink vodka's of choice, drink, isn't it? I don't mind uh, the odd wine as well. <laughs> to go with the uh, to go with the theme of the yeah. song. I love that. Now we've got Natalia in Denmark again. Overseas toffees. We love that. And um, did you ever have offers to play overseas? No, I didn't. Uh, I don't think. I don't think many of us did in that time. Obviously, Gary Lineker went over there, uh, Archibald went to Barcelona, etc. But in our time, no, not many, not many players went over to uh, to the foreign teams. And I never, I, I didn't really fancy it to be honest. I just wanted to make my name in English football, uh, where I thought it suited my game as well. Um, so no, I didn't, and I'm I'm so happy that I I, I wouldn't have gone anyway. Yeah. Uh, I'm an I'm an home lad. I'm an English you're a ho- lad. Yeah, yeah, you're a home boy, am, aren't you? I am. I, I didn't fancy. I, I can't eat them foreign. I couldn't eat them foreign <laughs> foods. I'm not bad now, but uh, I never even had a Chinese till I was about 22 year old. You know, I didn't till I came to Everton. Oh, that's it. I tell had, you what, there's some Chinese, brilliant Chinese restaurants well, we around had, here. Well, we had Chinese get-togethers. Uh, yeah. If we had a bad result, I would Kendall used to take us all all for a Chinese. And me and Neville Southall used to eat English meals because <laughs> I'd never had a Chinese until I came to Everton Football Club. I love that. It, cha- it certainly <laughs> it did change your life coming no, no. here, then, didn't it? Now, <laughs> looking at me, I've had Chinese, Indians and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Broadening the, the, the palette there, yeah. I love it. Just quickly, before we go to Carlo's interview as well, uh, who are you going to pick out as your, as your key players for Everton today? Our defenders. Yeah. I think if we keep Tottenham strikers quiet, we're going to win the game. But it's easier said than done. So I'm thinking Michael Keane, he's going to be up against uh, his England teammate in Harry Kane. Ben Godfrey at the back, he's going to be against Son, etc. So I think it's crucial that our back four are really rigid and, and I think really got to be defensive minded today. Yeah. Uh, not look to get forward. Uh, Luca Dean perhaps a little bit, but I think with with the with the formation and the players that Tottenham have got, I think we've got to be solid as a back four today. Yeah. So I think uh, I think Jordan might have one or two saves to make, um, but let's hope that uh, Lloris has in the uh, in the Tottenham goal as well. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to this game. I really am. Definitely, me too. And somebody else will be looking forward to this game. And coming up against Jose Mourinho is our manager Carlo Ancelotti. Here's what he had to say ahead of the game. Well, Carlo, firstly, Jordan Pickford back in your goal and Alan back in your midfield. How welcome are their returns? No, no, it's important to have them back. We are recovering players. I think last week, next week we are going to have um, uh, more players in the squad, but the presence of uh, Jordan and Alan, I think, gives, gives us more power. No Andre Gomez, you said in your press conference he would be available, what's happened there? Yeah, he trained, he trained with, with the team but uh, it was not so comfortable and so I prefer to wait a little bit to be ready for the next game. And also Seamus Coleman drops to the bench, any particular reason? No, 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 no reason, Seamus uh, played um, really hard against Brighton, he worked a lot, I'd want to, I want to put a fresh leg and Coleman will play the next game. Or, in this game, he, he is available. So, starting on the opening day against Tottenham with your terrific performance, it's been such a season of promise for you. If you want to have that great season that it's looked like being for so long, how important is it to win tonight? No, it's important. We are in the fight like uh, Tottenham, like uh, other team. We, have, we need to get uh, results. I think um, it's a really, really important game, but as is important all the other games that we have to play because I think we have to be focused on this game, but it, it is not, it will not be the last chance, an important chance that we want to get because we lost, we dropped points in the last uh, few games against Burley, against Crystal Palace. It will be important to win, and I hope that we understand this. What do you make of Jose's team? It looks like he's changed things, maybe gone to a three at the back. Yeah, but I think that we, we, have, to, we have to be focused on what we want to do on the pitch. Uh, we know the quality and the skills and the ability of Tottenham, but uh, we have to be focused on our performance. 
hoping for a big win today at Everton. It's going to be a tough one. It's a massive game. It's looking sharp there, isn't he? The gaffer, he's he been does. the barbers. He has been. I bet he queued up on Monday morning <laughs> like everybody else had to do. So, uh, yeah, he's had, he's had a little trim, but two uh, two fantastic managers on the sidelines uh, won every honour in the game as well. So uh, I'm sure they've got admiration for one another as well. So, uh, yeah, not only a battle of the team, battle of the managers as well. Battle of the managers as well. Let's hope that it's our Carlo and our Blue Boys that come out on top today. And uh, now you've got to go and make your way to the yes. stand, haven't you, Snodgwick? Yes, Darren I've Griffiths got to be with Darren for a good two hours now, which is uh, <laughs> it's not great, really. But, uh, no, into commentary and hopefully cheering the Blues on. Absolutely. So make sure you do tune in, guys, for live commentary on EvertonFC.com. That's with our very own Ian Snowden and Darren Griffiths as well. Uh, quickly, we're gonna, are we going to win two this one, one today? 2-1. Two 2-1. One. Two there one. you go. Not only a prediction, a score two prediction one. as well. I don't know the scorers, but we're going to win 2-1. I'll take that all day. Yes. All day. Well, <laughs> Ian, thank you so much for joining pleasure. me. Always an absolute pleasure. We will be back for our game against Aston Villa on May the 1st. We'll see you then. <laughs>